Two massive creatures are locked in a fight to the death in the middle of the sea. Destroyers, cruisers, and battleships fire special weapons and harpoons at one of the creatures, attempting to help turn the tide in favor of one. But they appear to have almost no effect on the gigantic monster. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob, and this is SCP-3700, also known as the Tides of War. SCP-3700 is what the SCP Foundation has labeled an 800-kilometer circular area in the North Sea. Located southeast of Iceland and north of the United Kingdom, the circle contains the Faroe, Orkney, and Shetland Islands. The seafloor is abnormally deep in this area, at roughly 5 kilometers below the ocean surface, roughly 20 times deeper than the rest of the North Sea. SCP-3700 experiences all kinds of strange, anomalous activity, including extreme weather and geological events. These are caused by the interaction between two separate entities, which have been designated as SCP-3700-1 and SCP-3700-2. SCP-3700-1 is an arthropod resembling the common lobster, except this crustacean is 6 kilometers long. It has a variety of blue, yellow, pink, and red markings carved into its carapace that resembles a woman's face. It has six arm-like limbs, four of which have claws, with two having club-like appendages on the end, and eight legs. It also has four orange eyes at the end of stalks. 3701's carapace shows significant damage, with many scars, cracks, and even some holes that reveal its soft inner tissue. It has several anomalous capabilities that it uses in its battle against SCP-3700-2. Its two club-like appendages are capable of striking, but they also produce a cavitation bubble that generates a force equal to several tons of dynamite, similar to what the mantis shrimp is able to do but on a much larger scale. Two of its eyes are able to project concentrated blasts of gamma radiation, and it's able to stop storms or other weather phenomena. Despite being 6 kilometers long, 3701 can reach speeds faster than 100 kilometers per hour, and has even shown the ability to demanifest and disappear if it doesn't locate SCP-3702 within roughly 15 days after appearing. SCP-3701 appears to be friendly in nature and shows some small signs of intelligence. When accompanied by Foundation ships, it will either ignore them or provide a small amount of aid by helping to move disabled craft away from danger. After appearing, it travels the full 800-kilometer area of SCP-3700 in a spiral pattern from the center out toward the edge. Interestingly, the center is the exact center point between the three island chains located within the circle, and is home to numerous shipwrecks. Since being first discovered by the Foundation in 1922, 3701 has slowed down considerably in its movement and has lost a significant amount of mass. It was first measured at a length of 16 kilometers, a full 10 kilometers longer than its current state. It also appears weaker and seems to be having a much harder time subduing SCP-3702. SCP-3702, on the other hand, looks like it belongs to the family of ray-finned fish and has an appearance that closely resembles the pelican eel, except that it has 13 appendages encircling the middle section of its body. These appendages look like the tentacles of an octopus, complete with suckers, and can tuck them into its body when not in use. 3702 is currently 32 kilometers long, and opposite to SCP-3701, it is growing larger having only been 300 meters long when first identified in 1945. Most of that length is the creature's whip-like tail that ends in a sharpened point. It's currently roughly one kilometer wide at its largest point, and each of its 13 tentacles is around 60 meters long. Its most distinctive feature is its massive mouth, which can open up almost three kilometers wide. 3702 is black in color with white, purple, and red bioluminescent lines that resemble a man's face on either side of its torso. SCP-3702 can create sudden changes in the weather, generating huge storms and Category 5 hurricanes, 
as well as massive whirlpools that suck in any vessel within 150 meters before grabbing them with its tentacles and tearing them apart. It's also able to produce high-energy sound waves and streams of blue fire from its mouth that it uses to destroy close-range targets. SCP-3702 appears at random locations within the 800-kilometer area, except during the spring and autumn equinoxes, when it appears at the exact center of SCP-3700. It stays submerged unless it encounters 3701, or another object, and will demanifest roughly 15 days after first appearing. It's extremely hostile to any creature or object that approaches it, and has even been witnessed destroying entire pods of whales. Conventional weapons have no effect on it, and even special anomalous weapons used by the Foundation have only had a moderate effect. Only 3701 has so far been able to subdue it. When SCP-3701 and 3702 do meet each other, they will engage in a prolonged fight, with each attempting to temporarily kill or subdue the other. Historically, the winner of each contest would swap depending on which half of the year it was, with 3701 consistently winning during the Northern Hemisphere's spring and summer, and 3702 winning during the fall and winter. However, since the Foundation has begun implementing containment procedures, SCP-3701 has won the last 64 cycles in a row. A number of changes happen when one of the creatures wins. When 3701 is successful, major storms in the area immediately cease, crop yields double, and local oceanic life increases their reproductive rates by a factor of three. This can lead to dead zones forming from the overpopulation of certain species of zooplankton. Erosion rates on the islands also increase by a factor of five which has led to the Foundation needing to bring in large amounts of dirt and sand in an attempt to combat it. When SCP-3702 wins and subdues or kills 3701, the weather becomes very dangerous with powerful hurricanes and rapid temperature changes that can range from below zero to over 28 degrees Celsius, capable of causing massive damage to buildings and huge losses of life. Travel by sea becomes extremely difficult due to huge waves and storm surges, making it difficult for supplies to reach the islands. Ocean food sources are driven from the area, and crop yields are reduced. Following its victory, 3702 does not demanifest, and instead, continues to patrol the area and attack vessels and will even approach the islands themselves. Foundation Naval Task Force Delta-7, nicknamed Northern Storm, is tasked with locating and assisting SCP-3701 in its struggle against 3702. Purchased from the United States military, it consists of 13 destroyers, 5 cruisers, and 15 smaller support craft. When Delta-7 locates SCP-3701, it will often acknowledge their presence by raising two of its claws into the air and clicking them while making a low, rumbling noise with its mouth. Delta-7 then accompanies SCP-3701 as it patrols its 800-kilometer area for 3702. Once the two meet, Delta-7 engages in Protocol Winter Maelstrom, where the destroyers shoot harpoon-based anchors into 3702's head, before moving in a circular pattern while they and battleships fire on it to ensure it can't orient itself. The cruisers, meanwhile, attempt to draw its attention by firing and moving in a serpentine pattern at a distance of 300 meters. The two creatures will battle, blasting each other with gamma radiation and powerful sound waves. They whip, bite, and club each other, cracking armor and ripping off tentacles and other appendages, until one finally stops moving and dissolves into the sea. Should SCP-3702 be successful in defeating 3701, then Project Tumult is activated, and the following procedures must take place. First, there is an immediate evacuation of all naval and civilian craft from the 800-kilometer zone. Next, all trade and ferry routes are stopped or rerouted for at least six months, and land-based aquatic defenses are activated. Aerial craft will continue to monitor and engage with 3702, while others continue to look for a reappearance of SCP-3701. Since it appears that SCP-3701 continues to physically degrade, and with the exact opposite being true for 3702, it's been proposed to let 3702 win and subdue 3701 twice every five years, despite the terrible effect on locals in the area. 
Though this plan has yet to be approved, it may be the only chance to stop 3702 from becoming so strong that 3701 is never able to defeat it again.